Well, it just seemed like a really good program uh, working with university students, engineering students, aerospace students. Jonathan DuBose has come to this dry lake bed in Nevada to help engineering students put their ideas and inventions to the test. Santa Clara University in California's Silicon Valley. Three of those young engineers, Karen, Lauren, and Francis, are working on a project for NASA. This is our optical system. It's a small, so low-cost nephilometer, a new tool for measuring and air pollution. So this, this is one big test for us. We actually get to go out into a, a desert or a place where it is very dusty. It is dusty on Nevada's Black Rock Desert, but dust is not why they've come here. Students from Montana State University have built a magnetometer. Before it flies in space, they will fly it on a rocket over Black Rock Desert. Well, I want to check the parachute. Um, eventually, this magnetometer will go on a satellite and help with attitude control. So as a satellite's spinning around the Earth, it can maintain one orientation. Right now, I'm just trying to keep track of everything. Um, I'm pretty relaxed. Uh, I don't get nervous until it gets on the pad. Tom Kearns belongs to a group of high-power rocketeers who launch dozens of these science payloads every year on their home-built rockets. Your project's not beeping. And there are over 10 satellites in orbit that have been worked on by engineers that have come out of this program. It's a program made possible by men and women whose passion is building and flying high-power rockets. Going in five, four, three, two, one. Come on, Maine. That was, that was very tense. That was the uh, most complex rocket I ever did. My favorite thing is I'm able to go in my garage and take cardboard and fiberglass and some epoxy and come out here and launch something over mock that can hit, uh, you know, the last one my recorded speed was 856 miles an hour. The experiment is carefully loaded into Jonathan's rocket too tight and the payload gets stuck and the rocket crashes. Too loose and the nose cone comes off in flight and the airframe is shredded. The entire flight will last only a matter of minutes, but a lot will have to go right for it to be a success. Our final event with this project. So it's kind of cool that we get to launch it. Yep. Ready to turn it over to the next team and hopefully get some good stuff out of this. <laughs> There it is. One. I don't know. I assume the payload came out because we had a nose cone. Oh, jeez. Out of the blue, the nephilometer descending safely under its own parachute. The science data from both of these launches will be used to develop two new aerospace technologies. And the students who designed them join a growing number of engineers around the world whose first satellite was a CANSAT and first launch on a home-built rocket.